Welcome back, welcome back to the Briggs and Brown Show. We are here. We are here. Yes, we are. About everything Bears football. And sometimes we're going to get off topic a little bit and talk about some shit that, who knows, hell, it just come out of left field. So, um, Briggs, good to have you, man. Good to see you, baby. You, you said shit. I, I, I know. Okay. We know. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we're not gonna. Okay, we don't. No apologies then. Okay. All right, just want to know no, where no, we're at. No, no, no. Um, so how you feel? State of state of our um our beloved. What are you thinking? The state of positive where we're at right now. Positive, positive. Okay. You, you know, what? if you look at us, if you look at our personnel, um, player for player, we are a better team this year than we were last year mm-hmm. and the year before. So um, we it, it's there's a lot of positivity. You know, when you look at the, the the players that we brought in, you look at Caleb, you look at um, the development of our offensive line, you look at where our defense is, the special teams. Uh, mm-hmm. You didn't like, you know, it's it, we're not we're not looking for microwave success. We're looking for that slow cooked, delicious roast that takes mm-hmm. time. So, right. it, 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 and, and anybody who really understands football knows that that uh, that that early success that Odell kept. Odell Beckham catch one-handed catch in the end zone that doesn't lead to consistent play. Consistent play leads to consistent play. Uh, agreed. That is a flash in the pan type of um, type of success right there. So mm-hmm. I'm with you. I'm with you. I think uh, I think you put it perfect, man. And then oh. where we're sitting, Thank where you. We're, I know you don't hear that much. I know. Thank you. <laughs> I thought it was perfect too. Thank you. <laughs> the way where we're sitting at right now um, with the schedule. Yeah, I think it is. Uh, it is a a great opportunity. Um, you got you got a few teams coming up that that you should beat. Yeah, and the Colts, the yeah, Colts, Panthers. You, you yep. got the Panthers coming up, mm-hmm. and you got a struggling. Um, mm, that is. <laughs> Whoa! There you go. What's up, baby? <laughs> well, well, I I meant to switch you, so you didn't see me. Of course, I got to mess up your show. But to add to your guys' point. The next four teams the Bears play are mm. combined 0 and 8. And yep. the next three teams they play, the the Colts, the Rams, and the Panthers are the three worst rushing defenses in football. Yeah, and they're and they're hurt too. Like the Rams, I mean, coming into the season, you thought the Rams were gonna be pretty good. And mm-hmm. you got their top two receivers on IR or hurting, um, probably not gonna play. They're in a rebuild. Well, yeah, they're they're they're, they're in a they've been in a rebuild, they're in a rebuild, you know, and and, and it's it's how they're able to reload is gonna yep. be interesting. It's a great place. Great place to be. I'll, I'll tell you this though, you know, uh, it's if if they're if the the teams that our next three opponents rush rush defense is what's lacking. It's going to be great for us because we don't rush the ball well. No, you know, not through two weeks we don't rush the ball well. So it'll be a great opportunity for us to you know make that a priority. Yeah, I mean we'll we'll find out because if you can't run the ball on teams that are very bad at stopping the run, then it's gonna be a You're long trouble. Yeah, it's gonna be a long season. You last thing you want to do, and for a defensive player, I know you would agree with this, that what we wanted to do coming into the game is make you one dimensional. We want to yeah. take something away. Now, if your talent or your skill set on your team takes that away for us, yeah, you're gonna be in trouble. So if you come <clears> in <throat> Can't run the ball. Running the ball only helps, especially with a young quarterback like a Caleb Williams. Um, yeah, it, it's gonna help. It's gonna a, a big, a big part of us uh, being one of the top rush teams over the last two years has been the running of our quarterback as well. Yes. Quarterback called runs. Now, is that going to be part of what we're going to be doing in the into this week and the following or the next three weeks? Is there are we going to have? quarterback called runs or is this just going to be handoff to the to the running back receivers whatever it was what's so I, I, 
I don't know if it was. I mean, I, I, I pushed back a little bit. I don't think. I think they called some runs, but the big plays came out of passing plays that he, Justin Fields, who we we're talking about, that he um, extended that play and got outside. Got of the It wasn't necessarily a called run. It just mm-hmm. turned into a running play because he took off running and counts as rushing yards. Even if it's a passing play, it doesn't matter. So you're saying – that the call last runs. year, uh, yeah, uh, that last year he didn't have a big 50 yarder that was on a called run. No, no, I'm not saying that over a 17 game period. You're saying most of it was creative, but I'm saying creative. that's not the reason. I think yeah. most of his yards came out of passing Escaping plays the call and then him scrambling out and making a big play because that's sure. easier when you spread out the guys. Yep. Not, it's not easy, but it's easier for a guy like Fields, as athletic as he is. Once you get the guy spread it out, and now you got a guy one on one with him, it's hard as hell to tackle that guy. So um, I think that's where the rushing yards came from. We're trying to be, I think we got to be more traditional uh, this year because Caleb isn't a runner like that. I think he can scramble and prolong plays, but he's not a runner like Justin Fields, like we saw out of Justin Fields. We're, he's not going to run for 1,000 yards. No, nah, that's not going to happen. Okay. So, that's fair. Nah, uh uh-uh. uh. But we do have to run the ball. We're going to have to run, right? run the ball. Okay. They've been they've been the topic of everybody, um, and it wasn't because of their running their run blocking ability. This offensive line, <clears throat> there's some stuff we got to fix on this offensive line. Yeah. And if it's moving guys, putting guys in another position, putting guys on the bench, actually making a change. But when Eberflus comes out and he says we're not making any changes, what does that do for you? Because it makes me scratch my head. I'm like, well. Well, why not? I don't. I don't understand. Right. Because like, there's something. There's talk, something that's talk. wrong. There's something that's wrong, and you're saying we're not going to change it. Uh, mm-hmm. It's. I'm with you. I have a. Pro- I do have a big problem with that. Uh, you, um, give me an answer. Tell me how you're going to fix it. Right. Tell me. Give. Tell me exactly how you're going to fix it. Tell me what fundamental. Tell me something that mm-hmm. we are mm-hmm. going to correct in order to change what we've been seeing because. Uh, what we've been seeing is it, our quarterback's not going to – he's not going to make it throughout the season. No. He's not going to make it. Gonna make it. And, we're, and we're not going to win. We're not going to win. Absolutely with right. Coaching, with that type of imbalance on offense where you have to throw it no matter what, where you you can't – third and one, you can't just line up and go get that one yard. Because when it gets down to the good teams and you have yeah. to get that yard against San Francisco, there has to be a play that you can go to. It's turning out that Minnesota's defense is pretty damn good. So pretty good. Absolutely. You see them when you see Green Bay, when yep. you see Detroit, like you got to be able to come up with that yard third and one. Or, or you can try to do what Philly did, and now the damn running back dropped the ball out of the backfield, and now the other team gets the opportunity to drive down, score, they win the football game. Listen, I don't mean to – I mean to stay on subject, but listen, the, the – the, <laughs> Eberflus, listen, he needs to win. You need to better find a way to win because when you get into a position and when you lose, when you interview, you make everybody want you to be fired on the spot with your yeah. answers. I can't, yes. you know. Yes. And I listen, I'm an Eberflus fan. I am. Yeah. I, I, I I love the way the players respond, and I love what's happening with the defense and mm-hmm. special teams. You know, there's one, there's just one more major hurdle mm-hmm. that we have to yeah. get over, and that's the offense and getting consistency out of the offense. My um, God. But we've been hearing this right here for 20 years, man. It's been a long time. Did you we've say Twinkie? Twinkie, Twinkie, 20, Twinkie. 20, okay, okay. I thought Twinkie. Right. On, the West, on the East Coast, on the East Coast, down South. East Coast, down, down South. south. Yeah, down, yeah, East Coast, okay. down South. Down yeah. South, yes. And Twinkie, yeah. they, everybody, all, all my people know what I'm talking about. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, all that, right. y'all all West Coast folks, yeah. No. Every, every farm animal in White Springs knows Twinkie. <laughs> All right, all right. Hey, shout out to White Spring, baby. <laughs> shout out, shout out. <laughs> hey, hey, I think we, I, we, like, I think we just got, we just got like that a Walgreens table. No, the fast internet. Like, what's the <laughs> fiber? Fiber. Got... That's what it is. We, but I think we just got, we just got fiber over there, boy. You can't tell us nothing. That's crazy. Nothing. Ain't nothing skipping. Ooh, man, we, ooh, have a, we have a call. Ain't nothing skipping. Man, come on. Yeah. That boy, you live White Springs right next to Rosewood, huh? I bet you it's right there. It's down the street. It's down the street. <laughs> but for real, Rosewood is down the street. Probably about 30 minutes away. 
yeah, it's like for real. Oh my yeah, it's, goodness, it's crazy. Wow. <laughs> yeah, see, this is this is the issue. This is the issue right here because you're from Sacramento. Yes, yeah. you need yes. to get out there and far and as far away from White Springs as possible. Far. Like we we didn't even think like we even think about Sacramento. Sacramento is too big for us. Like way too big. Listen, the only thing I know about White Springs I saw in the movie Rosewood. I saw everything I needed in Rosewood. Yeah, and I was like, yes. oh, whoa, that yeah. was what life was like fifty years ago, seventy years ago. That's crazy. Yes, crazy. yeah, it's different. <laughs> it's a lot different than growing up in on the West Coast. Yeah. Oh, growing yeah. up in the South is a lot different than growing up in the West Coast. You got to deal with a lot of different people, a lot of different, like, how yeah. people feel about you. And then, I mean, sometimes, you, okay, you feel how you want to feel. Just yeah. let me know how you feel so I can kind of steer clear of what you got going on over there, you know? So it was different. My family, my family, uh, my dad's side of family from um, uh, uh, Texas, Louisiana, you know, by way of Mississippi. Mm -hmm. yeah, so mm -hmm. when I was 16, my, I, I, I flew to, to Beaumont, Texas. It was right there on the border yeah. of Texas and Louisiana mm -hmm. with my dad. Flew into Houston. We drove down to Beaumont. And I'm, I, I'm from California, okay? <laughs> like, the, you want to talk about integration, you know? Like, we, we were all integrated, you know? You, just, you know, the black Mexicans, the Asians, everybody. Yeah. I, get to, I get down to Beaumont, and my cousins take me to um, um, a... A, uh, a Costco, like a you know a Sam's Club or Costco, right? Yep. And, and I'm, I'm telling you, I go down the street, and to the right is a is a all black Costco. To the left is an all white Costco. And oh, we wow. go. I was like, oh, the we, this is the Costco we go to. And I was like, man, I've you know where I'm from, everybody goes to the same Costco, but not because they can't. They just want to support this particular. Costco or this owner? Apparently only black people support this Costco to the right and only white people support this Costco to the left. When when was this? 96. So I had it had to be I was 16, so I had to be 96. I had to be 96. Yeah. And yeah, just yeah. And that this is this is factual information. And my, yeah, my, yeah. my cousin knew everybody that worked in there, so we went around and got full off of samples. <laughs> <laughs> I've never eaten. I, I have a I have a membership at Costco. I've never eaten the samples. My kids, they destroy the samples. Destroy. Absolutely. That is what they want to do. Daddy, text me when you're at the register. What? Where are you going? Do you not are you not allowed to go walk through automatic doors? Me? You know, automated doors at, at grocery stores and stuff. Are you not allowed to go walk through? Yeah, why not? Oh, okay, I'm just saying because if you don't take samples, you don't do this, you don't do that. No, you sound, kinda, you sound like, slightly Amish to me, buddy. No, 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 I don't do samples. I, I, I don't know how long. Country. If they don't, I, I don't know how long that sample been sitting in that little white cup. I don't know how many people, how many kids walked over and they picked. Now nah, I want that one. I'm gonna get this one. Now nah, I want that. Nah, hell no. Nah. You wait. Oh, you okay. supposed to. You watch them as they make it. Right when they're, it's fresh. When you, you just sit by there as they're putting it in the first cup, and then you grab the first one. Okay, when I go to Costco, I just want I just want to go get what I want to get. I'm already in my mind. I'm gonna spend thirty dollars. In reality, I'm gonna spend three hundred dollars, and I ain't gonna want to. I'm gonna be mad. I'm gonna right. be upset. I right. know it. And that when that receipt come out, that's the one receipt that you right. get. that's like that long. Oh, it's like, long, right? Like, like, oh, like, shit. And then then I'm already upset about that. Now I gotta show this person at the door before they let me out. And they got a circle. Stuff. And then they sort of go item by item for item. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Like, they, yeah. Yeah. Like, they move this one. Like you, like seriously? Oh, you you didn't see the toothpaste? That's what you was checking for? <laughs> like, man. I'm talking about hot, man. Golly. But I love Costco. I love Costco. So, but I don't do the same. Yes, you do. I bet you do. <laughs> you know, we, hey, we all love Costco all day long. Get the pizza or the hot dog on the way out every single time, but we oh, also man. love our guys over. You get the hot dog when you you always get the hot dog every time. E every time, every okay. time, that's every a, time. Listen, Brad, that's a big hot dog, boy. <laughs> that is, uh, you know what? We'll get to the hot dog here in a minute, but we got to give a shout out here to our guys <laughs> over 
had Roback. Yes, sir. Uh, Let's go. Uh, Roback. AB's rocking the Roback right That's now. We appreciate it. Florida, it. You that looks nice. Hey, you see the Florida on it, though. The Florida on it is sweet, though. Is that a – what is that? I can't see it. Let's stop like, it. That is a – that is The shirt looks nice, though. Okay. Yeah. Right. Very nice. nice. Looks like, looks nice. Like. Let, me, let me tell you about the, 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 the niceness of that shirt. Roback's active wear. You all know by now we wear Roback all the time. It's quite simple. Best fit, best feel. The quality of the gear just speaks for itself, as you can see. Their performance polos perform better in the heat than any other polos. They are moisture wicking so the polo doesn't stick to you and have such a nice stretch. Their everyday shorts are also perfect for the combo for a day on the move. They look clean, but they but use the comfort of an elastic waistband. With fall right around the corner, what better item to prepare for the season than adding one of their performance hoodies to your closet? They're the softest items we own, and we can't take them off even now in the Chicago heat. So like I said, best looking, best fitting performance polos, collars that never lose their shape. They have it all, solids, classic stripes, and fun prints. Designed for comfort and built for activity, moisture wicking and breathable fabric. Incredibly versatile. Wear them with a polo untucked or a tee on the move. Elastic, elastic waistband once again for easy comfort and nice stretch fabric. Clean look no matter the occasion. So Use the code CHGO20 on Roback.com for a generous 20% off your first order. That's spelled H-R-H-O-B-A-C-K.com. That's 20% off all polos, hoodies, and shorts with code CHGO20. Make sure to check them out, and they will have you ready for whatever travels or activities you have. And one of those activities you better have here is this upcoming Sunday, September 22nd, just a couple days away. The Chicago Bears take on the Indianapolis Colts, and CHGO Bears will be at Joe's on Weed Street uh, doing a bunch of fun you know, stuff. We're going to have giveaways, live pregame show, live postgame show. So if you go to allchgo.com slash events, you'll be able to come hang out with us. So like I said, live pregame, live postgame, live Briggs and Brown show, uh, and then you get to watch the Bears take down the Indianapolis Colts. Adam Hogue, Mark Carmen, myself, the whole CHGO team will be there, even some of your favorites from some of the other teams we cover here in this city. So, again, go to allchgo.com slash events. You can come over to Joe's on Weed Street here in Chicago. Uh, starts at 11 a.m. for pregame. Tickets, $10 for general admission, $65 if you want to include the drink package uh, for the game and, and, and get some drinks in while you're watching the Bears take on the Colts. So, please, come on out. Hang out with us. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, all right. Uh, I just want to throw this question to you as we move on here to the next topic and uh, something that came across the waiver wire, Mr. Lance Briggs, is the Chicago Bears put out congrats to Olin Krutz, Lance Briggs, and Peanut Tillman on being included in the Pro Football Hall of Fame's Class of 2025 nominees. So congrats to you, Lance. You know, I know you just watched – you guys watched two of your former teammates and Julius Peppers and, and Devin Hester get into the Hall of Fame. And yeah. uh, Devin, obviously, is somebody that, you know, for a lot of us, including me, like it just Julie. it was awesome to see him yeah. get it. And the emotion that he still has for this game and this team, I, I think it means a lot to all of us as Bears fans. But, Lance, for you, you know, being nominated now, like, what's your mindset when you when you hear that? What does that mean to you? And how much do you think about that and, and, and how much it would mean to you to get in? Uh, well, <clears throat> first of all, uh, uh, Julius and Alex were never teammates. But right. um, uh, it was awesome seeing all those guys get in there. Um, it, it, you know, uh, I'm, uh, I'm excited for everybody that gets in, um, regardless of whether we play together or not. It doesn't matter, you know, um, for me, for me, um, I just know that, you know, I, I know that I deserve to be in there. Um, it's, uh, you know, the, the, the process for how it happens is it is what it is. Uh, and you know, when that day comes, it'll go, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not losing any sleep over it. I'm not losing any sleep over it, man. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm I know what my body of work is, you know, I know my body of work is and, uh, and I'm proud of it, you know? And so I, you know, a lot of these, uh, a lot of young linebackers, you know, that I talked to or, or, or even kind of older, a little bit, even a little older, you know, a lot of, there's a lot of teach tape out there, you know, when they do teach tape, 
you know, for linebackers in my position, you know, uh, my name comes up, you know, Derek Brooks comes up, you know, there are players. And then these guys that are coming up, coming up now, they're, they're building their teach tape. That's going to teach the younger, you know, so it's, it's a, it's a cool cycle that, that happens that, that, that I know I'm a part of. Alex, you know, um, when you talk about some of the other nominees, you know, and, and Charles peanut Tillman, you know, um, for you, what was that like watching him come into the league and, and, you know, kind of an unknown commodity people didn't know really what to expect and then to watch him turn into the player that he became here in Chicago and to this day on the broadcast his name still gets brought up every time a ball gets punched out and he clearly made an impact on the the game itself and not just the Chicago Bears that honestly will live forever man listen so when we when we had that draft class like the year before, we weren't very good, okay? <laughs> we, weren't, we weren't a very good football team. And we, we took on some injuries during that season, my rookie year. And having to travel down to Champaign didn't help, you know, yeah. while they were renovating Soldier Field. But we go into the draft, and we need help. We, we need help. Like, we're, we got four wins, I think, and we need some help. And when they took Peanut, I've told Peanut this story too. They took Peanut, and I was like, <laughs> why in the hell would you draft somebody out of Louisiana? My no damn, like, I, but I ain't know that. I ain't know what it was. So I was like, Louisiana, no damn well. Like, <laughs> damn. like, who is this? Like, oh man, dog, I'm talking about I was like, we need help. And he gets here and he runs funny. He's like all lanky and like he would run and he's just like, I was like, man, okay. All right. But <laughs> the play, remember, remember his, his rookie year, the play that he made on Randy Moss in the end zone where he snatched the ball from him. Yes. Hey, like, oh, oh, okay. All yes. right. Hey, hey, this yes. is going be all right, you know? Like, yes. and he just kept getting better and better and Peter's more like he's a technician um I think I think he took more chances later in his career as far as at the ball but if if his job is to play outside of the receiver he got outside leverage he's gonna allow you okay you gotta catch it I'm gonna come up and I'm gonna tackle him hard what he like figured out from that or what evolutionized from that was him punching at the ball was him trying to get the ball out because it's very hard when Brett Favre and Donald Driver's running a slant route and you got outside leverage to stop that if the linebacker doesn't get underneath that, right? Mm-hmm. So it's just hard to do. So he had to figure out something. And here we go with the peanut punch and completely change the game. Like it's just peanut. But he, here's peanut. the thing though, it didn't start overnight. Like peanut, that's one of the yeah. things that he did in college. Like he took the ball away. So it was mm-hmm. one of those deals where – um, um, we're getting a, a, a corner that does more than just just cover. You know, what I mean, this is a he's a physical corner that in a, in a in a different sense of the of, of the word. You know, mm-hmm. he's a guy that actually can get the ball back for us. Uh, and uh, I remember there was a year where uh, once we started training camp until probably week eleven. Right, this is a, I believe this is a, you can ask anybody on this team. Peanut punched the ball out every day in practice. Like every day there was a punch out, whether it was in one-on-ones, mm-hmm. team, seven-on-seven, inside drill, whatever it was. He was never an inside drill, but the, all the other stuff, all the other stuff, yeah. Or in special team, yeah. Peanut punched the ball out once every practice until like week 11. And yeah, that practice. is an insane stat. And you wonder he why he was so good on the field? Mm-hmm. Because he did it in practice. He worked at it. He worked at it yeah. constantly. Shit, I remember, I remember getting pissed off at Peanut. Because he's trying to punch the ball out, and he's giving up another three yards. I'm like, hell, tackle him. It should have yeah. been second and seven. Now it's yeah. second and four because you're trying to punch the ball out. Like, There's some consequences. There's some slight consequences. Not- but you know what? When you if, you if you got some dogs on your team, you got yes. some dogs on your team. Absolutely. Listen, you can punch at it. We're going to come take his head off. You'll yep. come take For his sure. head off. For sure. Like, it was – like, so – and, yeah, and Lance, I mean, Lance and I played on the weak side of the defense Um, for the most the part. strong side. <laughs> which side which is the strong, strong side. side. Yes, okay. which was the strong side. So, <laughs> but we, so we had a lot of things that we had to 
feel out for one another. So I had to know what he wanted to do. I had to get a, have a real good idea of if he's blitzing, I know how he is. Like, he might not be blitzing, but I can look inside like, oh, damn, he about to get, yeah, he going. He going. Like, <laughs> so I need to make sure I keep contained here because he's going. It's running back, go across my face. If a running back's offset and we got that yeah. field technique, I know Lance is going. Hey, B, hey, B. Yeah. Man, I got it, man. Dang, I yeah, got yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. He want to blitz because he know that tackle going to jump out and he going to yeah. have that B gap. Just hit that B gap. Oh, we gone. To get sack. Yeah. Bro, we had a, I had somebody come up to me. Uh, we talked it was a couple days ago, and they were they were talking about, hey man, he's like, he's just, you know, uh, got a young guy. He's running around and and he's just he's off target. He's missing guys and he's hitting other people. He's hitting he's hitting his own teammates and <laughs> and you know and he he turned to me like as if I was going to give him a supportive answer, and I said, listen, it was like if you ask. Peanut Charles Tillman right now, mm -hmm. he will tell you how many times I missed the target and hit him, and mm -hmm. I can hear it. Like I, I thought I was coming in, I was going to smack this guy. This guy ducks at the last second. I fly right over, and hit Peanut, and hear Peanut. Oh, <laughs> God, you got me. You know what I mean? <laughs> You're apologizing. Yes. <laughs> So many times, man. Well, so well, times. well, Briggs, Briggsy, you know, I, that is something I've always wanted to ask you since, especially since you started here, you know, and you, you brought it up, Alex, where he'd line up over you and he'd shoot that B gap to me watching your career, Lance, no smoke. Like I, I, I don't think there was anybody better at shooting the gap and timing the snap. Like you were in the backfield instantly on so many times when you blitz, can you, Talk about your mindset and your technique on how you were able to oh. do that and, and get through well, it. Yeah, yeah, I, I, know, I, know, I got a great answer. Down. Absolutely. I, I love know I'm asking about yeah, that. Nobody better than getting Let, off the rock. Can I guess my yeah, guy? Nobody. Nobody. Yeah. All right. You're right. He, you know what? He's right. He, you know what? When you're right, you're right, Brad. Hey, <laughs> you know, I'm I'm gonna tell you the honest, honest truth. I was on the I was on the football field with the high school this morning before they got we had a practice before they they drive up to uh, Mission Viejo, um, and I was talking to we we just moved one of our linebackers to D D tackle you know he's just super aggressive he's fast he's got good size and and he's he's a guy that you have to account for and he's gonna give give um, offensive linemen fits and I was telling him, I was like listen I said I I played with this kid uh, this this guy named Tommy Harris and um, and he was he was just special, you know. And, and when I played with him, offensive linemen would say all the time, they're like, I hate playing against this guy in particular because he's so fast and he's strong. His punch is fast. Like, just dealing with him, he's, so, he's already in the backfield and he's disrupting everything. So for a linebacker, um, a, a D lineman that plays fast, and you have, now you have four of them that are playing fast, a linebacker can play extremely fast. We get against a zone team with they, they rarely pull or don't pull at all. Now I'm cheating up and I'm shooting the gap right now. You know, if we have a pull team, yeah, then I'll be back a little bit. You know, and 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 read out of my uh, read out of my gap if I see a pull. But you can play fast when your D linemen are playing fast. One of us is going to come free. Yeah. One of us is going to come free. You have to uh, you have to believe that. And so if everybody everybody attacks that gap with the same uh, uh, speed, force, and all that good stuff, somebody is going to come free. It might be you. It might be him. It might be the DN. Somebody's coming. So the um, what I'll say, uh, Tommy. I, I think Tommy was man. I, I I never played with Warren Sapp, but I tell you what, I, I can't imagine to, a healthy Tommy Harris for ten years isn't on that same level. Yeah. He was the strongest, quickest, fastest. Like, fast and quick is different, but he was both. He ran a 4.6 in the 40. He was 295, 300 pounds. He ran 4.65 in the 40. It's insane. Like, he, I saw him with these two eyes right here bench. Like, not the not regular bench. Like, the incline. Incline, 4.05. Uh, uh. It's like... Like what? Like what? What is happening? And he is getting off the rock quicker than I am. Like I'm like, what? This dude? He? I'm telling you, I, as far as just super, super, uber talented. Mm -hmm. Like man, like he for three technique, 
He's a perfect, perfect yeah. guy. Like, had they had all the skills for a three technique, if his body can just hold up, he would have been unbelievable. Like, bro, so when I, when when Tressman when Tressman came uh, got hired on, mm -hmm. we had an opportunity. That's when Aaron Donald was was killing him at the the Senior Bowl, mm -hmm. and I'm looking at this. I'm like, okay, wait a minute. All right, so I'm on the back end of my career, you know. You know, you know, it's, it's, I'm moving a little slower than I used to, you know. Mm -hmm. And I see Aaron Donald. And, like, the first thing that flashed is I'm like, Tommy Harris, all, Tommy Harris 2.0. All day. And I said, listen, you, if we, we have to get this guy. Mm -hmm. We get this guy. I'm telling you right now, we, we'll be playing cover two for a long time. Yep. Because this guy is going to kill it. And any linebacker, whether it be me or as we transition – you're going to fly around and going to make a whole lot of plays. Yep. And we ended up they, uh, L.A. Rams or, or St. Louis at the time, I believe. They ended up taking them the pick before, uh, before us, and we ended up wow. in the corner. Wow. So that so so these three that we just talked about. So Tommy, I was here when he got here. I was here when Briggsy got here. I was here when Peanut got here. The other guy was already here, and that's Olin Cruz. Olin Cruz was already here when I got here playing at a very high level yeah. and kept that, maintained that, maybe even <coughs> a notch um, during my time here. And he was always at practice. He was always that guy that, that kind of led that attitude of yeah. the, of running the football, the toughness that you have to have, the, the focus that you have to have and all the same. And this type of stuff you didn't really see, as far as a player, you didn't see it with him, but there was a number of occasions where Ola and I had conversations about football that helped me, right? So he just bring y'all to the side where most people look at him and they're like, he's just a mean mf -er, you know? But he really was. He, he was mean. But he was super, super – he would educate you. He would help you with your game and talk to you about how, why – I was able to beat you on that play because I saw this or I saw that, right? So I think all three should be in the Hall of Fame, and I think it's just a testament to – it's what I tell people all the time. Like, why we were so good, this is why. I mean, we got two guys that's already in the Hall of Fame that was on that team. We got three that yeah. should be in the Hall of Fame, I'm saying, over the next three or four years. Yeah. That's five guys in the Hall of Fame on one football team. And that's not even counting Adewale Agunlier. That's not counting Mike Brown, Tommy Harris, Chris mm -hmm. Harris, mm -hmm. Nathan Vasher. Like, like <coughs> man, all these – Tank Johnson, like all these yeah. other players that – Hunter Hillemont that made all of this come together, you know? Like mm -hmm. it made it all come together and people wonder why we were so good. That's why. We had talent. We had very little ego. We had an ego as a team because we thought we were good. Absolutely. But but individually, <laughs> and everybody understood their everybody understood their role. Correct, correct. You, know, you understand that's... everybody has a role to play, and if you understand mm. your role, you know I mean mm. you'll fit better. But if you got somebody that that listen, man, I should I should be the guy shining. I should yeah. be the guy that's on the cover. You know what I mean? I should be this. You know, when you get yeah. that kind of attitude, man, you're gonna it's it's, it's not gonna be this. It's gonna be this mm. right here. Yep. Hey, I'm, I'm I'm gonna tell you this right here. So this is I think this will give people an idea, and the people that that are watching this that aren't Bear fans or didn't watch the Bears, let's say, back in 06, ESPN comes to the facility. ESPN, they, they're going to do their little uh, poster, like back when you want to be on ESPN, the magazine, the cover, right? So this is how good we were. So Erlacher was that dude, right? Yep. So Tommy Harris was supposed to do this magazine thing, right? Mm -hmm. He was supposed to do it. And Tommy couldn't do it. So Tommy was like, hey, Alex, do you want to do this? And ESPN was like, oh, yeah, yeah, heck yeah, we'll, Alex, Alex, can you do it? We had so many people, and this is ESPN, the cover, the magazine cover, which was the hottest thing back then. Like, you want to be on that cover. Mm -hmm. And they were <coughs> so cool with me. If I'm really, like, pumping myself up, I was, like, the fifth or sixth guy. <laughs> some weeks I'm the fifth guy, some weeks I'm the sixth guy. Like, very <laughs> few times. Was out of number two guy, you know, like yeah, very few. That that's when I got NFC Divas a player of the week type of deal. <laughs> yeah. I was number two guy, like, but like everybody understood their role, 
everybody could play at a very high level. There are a number of games where Nathan Vasher took over, Peanut took over. Without Peanut, without Vasher in this game, we don't win. Without Ogulier, yeah. we don't win. Without Tommy Harris, we can't win that game. Without Briggsy and Erlacher, of course, and Briggs, of course. Like, but Mike Brown, you don't win that game. Without mm-hmm. Chris Harris, you don't <clears> win that game. Like, it's just we have so many guys understood their role and that we could count on to do their job each and every time. That's what made us so good, man. That's why we were that that little this right here, that yeah. NFC championship deal right now. Yeah, it's that's right there. It's perfect. Yeah. That's what we're yeah. That's why you've done it before. <laughs> yeah. Well, so l- l- man. L- let me bring this to your attention because you guys talk mm-hmm. about playing in your own roles and a, a clip that's making the rounds today. And a mm-hmm. lot of people are shooting at Mel Kuyper. He made the statement on ESPN this morning that two high safeties should be outlawed. And there's this big conversation about the way the league is trending right now and league wide through two weeks, 69 passing touchdowns, fewest since 2006, uh, only an average of 7.1 average uh, target per depth, the lowest on record, 41% designed run plays. That's the highest since 2008. 545 blitzes. That's the fewest on record. I know the Bears are feeling differently right now. And then the final 46% too high safety percentage. That's the highest on record. So everybody's saying like this too high safety is forcing teams to check the ball down and everything that that we're not getting the explosiveness that fans and people that want to see that that's what they want to see. Too high safety obviously is the bread and butter of a cover too. So I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts. And I'll start with you, Alex, and you can, and, or, you know, and, and Briggs, you, you guys obviously played this and, and understand what makes a great too high safety and also what it takes to beat that. And I'd love to hear your input on that. No, we, we were, I, I think we understood, just like I think Mel Kuyper is probably alluding to, is that in order to beat a really, really <laughs> good cover two team, you have to put together nine, 10, 11 plays in a row to get down the field. We're not going to give you that big play. So you're going to have to methodically go down the field and score on us. Now, that's without us getting a sack and putting you in second and long, third and long, because then you're in trouble, right? Because we got them horses that can go up front, and you're still not going to be able to push the ball for those big plays down the field. So I I don't like it. I don't think you can just come in and say we can't play this particular defense. Because I played in that defense. I love that type of defense because it gives me the three seconds I need to get to the quarterback. If I can't get there in three seconds, then I got a problem. But there are there are plays out there that can that are cover two beaters. I'ma stop there because that's as far as I know past the defensive line. So cover two beaters, fix it. Yep. Why can't they just run them? Come on now. Listen, you know, when you, when you talk about too high, you know, you're not just talking about cover two. You're also talking about cover four, you know. Mm-hmm. And so you you take you take um, the the Chicago Bears cover two in 2006 and then you combine it with, let's say, the the Pittsburgh Steelers, the way they ran cover four, you mm-hmm. know, when um, when they were in their hay, it's, you know, with Dick LeBeau. You know, it, you're talking about coverage wise. You're you're only going to be dumping the ball down. You mm-hmm. all right? That's because they're they're sound. We we were we were sound in cover two. They were sound in cover four. You know, and uh, and we both played cover three extremely well as well during that time. What about, uh, what about <clears throat> Seattle? What what did Seattle run? Seattle ran a lot of cover three. They're in a lot of cover three, and that there's champion, that championship year. They ran a lot of cover yeah. three, but they have a, a monster uh, a pass rush. We ran – there were years where we ran cover three, too, but we had a monster pass rush. You know, it's, it's a good defense when you have a great pass rush, timing-wise. Um, but, you know, the, the, the thing about it is, uh, just like you said, there's cover two beaters, there's cover four beaters. You know, you got the – and you have a quarterback. Let's bring it – now you bring in – you bring in the guys that get paid on the other side of the ball. <clears throat> when they do their job correctly, you, they find out, listen, there's a chink in the chain here and here. We're going, you know, in the NFL, you you game plan a player, you know, in in those young in, in college and high school, you game plan uh, a, a team's deficiencies. But you'll you'll pick out specific player, and that's who you know you have to take advantage of in the NFL. So you get an Aaron Rodgers, and you get against a, a Chicago Bear team, and and we hold him all game long, fourth quarter. 
they run the cover four or cover two beater that they've been waiting for the whole game, and it hits, and they end up winning. Mm -hmm. Okay, they end up winning the game off of 170 yards of total freaking <laughs> offense. Yes. <laughs> well, we have been through a lot of them games right there. All oh, right. Gosh. Oh man. Yeah, I, I, I can't. I can't see them banning it. No way. Nah, you can't. You can't ban a defense, man. Nah, get out of here. Nah. No nope. football. It, that's what it it's is. Football. Come on. Right. Man. Are we gonna ban? Are we gonna ban? Can we ban the damn running back? When he coming through the hole, because if we hit our if if our helmet touches the damn uh, ball carrier, it's a penalty. But when that running back coming through the hole and he dips his head like this, don't nobody say nothing. Mm. Don't nobody. Mm. That's the same thing. I'm well. I'm hurt, taking the flag. I'm taking shoulder. the flag every time because he's not. Mm -mm, you ain't gonna do that to me, player. What no, about, no, no, what about no, your no, guys' no, thoughts no, on the? What about your thoughts on the tush push? It's like, it's like when you talk about people that think plays should be banned, I've heard that before. What do you think of the tush push and, and how you guys think you would have defended it? I, I can tell you right now that I would have, uh, I would have like, I would have dove, but I would have dove with, with intention and in, uh, intent and urgency and hit that dog on quarterback as soon as he snaps that ball. Now I may not listen, something may not happen, but I'm going to disrupt something and give somebody some time to do something. But I'm, but I'm diving. I'm timing that out right now. And I'm going to hit this quarterback and I'm going to pull and hold and, and whatever it is, tug, whatever I can to make sure that he doesn't get that first down or at least right. hold him up for a second or two to let everybody else come in. All right. So just, just for everybody that's watching, listen, man, and if y'all see me outside out in Chicago, y'all going to think, yeah, like, dang, he's a big dude on the football field. I'm a little itty bitty dude. I'm even I'm an even smaller guy when we start talking about like third and inches and fourth and inches where I gotta squeeze yeah. down and then shoot a gap, take on a double team. Come on, man. No, I don't want that play, but I don't think you can ban it. No, I, you can't you ban it. it. How do you, you do better it? figure it out? You do, I I mean it's just hey, bring your big boy pass because we had some of them games where you know Jerome Bettis is gonna get the ball 30 times. Yeah. All right. You know that Priest Holmes is gonna get the ball 32 times. Mm -hmm. You know that Adrian Peterson is gonna get the ball 30 times. You see that? And thing? don't let it be, thing? don't let it be the, the game where hey, he's 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 50 yards from breaking the rushing record or whatever yes. it is. You know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> no, we remember we went to that we went to that Kansas City game. <laughs> yeah, we and it ain't gonna happen to us. Four. It's like, he ain't gonna happen to us. It ain't gonna happen to us. Priest Holmes ain't gonna break the record. He needed two touchdowns. Man, Willie Rope, I bet you Willie Rope body slammed me six times that day. I'm like, what is happening? What? Good Lord. Like, these boys was for real. Like, they had two. So, Willie Rope and mm. Will Shields was on that. Will team. Shields. Yes. And then they had John Tate, who later came to us. And us. They had Tate on that team. Man, listen, man. The boys was monsters. Mm. That man had three touchdowns. He didn't have two. That man had three touchdowns. Three. He sure did. <laughs> he sure. did that his little, his little hey, dance. Oh, the my zone. God. The, the best way. Okay, so back to your question, Brad. The best way to prevent that play is not allowing them to get to third and inches, fourth and inches. Put them in a position where they can't do that. That's yeah. it. But if you have to defend it, with our defense, because we were a small, fast team. Yeah. You in trouble. Now, when we had big Lance, his first year, my first year, we had big Keith Trailer and you had um big Ted Washington. Come on, yeah. man. Like now you got some horses in there. That yeah, it's a little them. different. Yeah. Yeah, but not with the team that we were successful on. Nah, we were small, man. We we're a small team, but we were fast and we run to the football. That's what we did. Bro, I remember. I remember the first time seeing that I saw the ream. I didn't. I don't. I don't. I don't remember seeing much ream at all in college. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so I'm. I'm watching a play. I'm watching. I'm like, this is a power. But the way that they're attacking this power, you know, it's like I'm like, it's like there's two on one on the defensive end. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, what? How do we fit this? And where is? And, and and so you know, Bob, he goes, he's like, they're they're reaming it. And I was like, what the hell is a ream? <laughs> <laughs> right, and so we're in practice. We're in practice, and Wale, Wale's like, 
his fucking ring. He was like, yeah, they're coming to kick me out while I'm holding this guy. Then they're bringing yeah. another guy that's coming to kick me out. I got to take yeah. on two guys. Yes. Right? You yes. know what Wale yes. is, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so when I start to really realize what they're doing, I'm like, man, that is, that's a tough play. Yes. And they're doing it, and they really want to ream us because what Alex said, listen, we have, we're have we undersized DNs. So what we want to put extra stress on them, putting an extra lineman while they're engaged, we're going to bring another lineman to kick them out, you mm -hmm. know, and we're going to run right behind it. We're just saying, listen, we're not here to hit a home run, but we want to, we're going to get positive yards every time. Yep. That, ta <clears throat> is that tackle, if, after he hits that end, is he coming up to the next level to get you? Is that is that how that works? Yeah, so that so as you're yeah. engaged, as you're engaged, the mm -hmm. the the pullers coming instead of him coming to kick out, kick anybody out, he's coming to just to smash it's, you. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay, got it, got yep. it. That's a that's so a you got you got you taking on him and you got to lean yeah. in. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. I know y'all ask you like why? Well, why why don't you know this, Alex? You play in. See, I play. Remember, I said earlier the opposite side. Yeah. I play, <laughs> I didn't yep. play on the side with the tight end. I, oh, I, 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 you're right. I never had. I don't. I never had this conversation with you. But I sure. Hey, oh, I, yeah. I had Wale, and Wale is very vocal, yeah. and he'll tell you right now. Here comes the wind. You better come down here. <laughs> <laughs> because if, if they do, so, and, and Wale is yelling that because if Lance don't come down here, guess what? They finna run it again. <laughs> he go, yeah, he on, again. he on one leg. He on one leg like this right here. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, Caleb Williams said yesterday uh, in his press conference that front side wins games, backside wins championships. So, uh, you know, this is some high end football talk you guys are having right now. And, and I know fans are really enjoying it. So uh, to wrap things up here on the show, let's mm -hmm. get into what you guys think on this Colts preview and mm -hmm. uh, your expectations for the game here on Sunday. I think there's two. Well, there's a few. There's a few super explosive players. You got Jonathan, um, the running back they have over there. Yeah, you got Jonathan Taylor. Richardson, Jonathan Taylor. You got Richardson, uh, the uber talented uh, uh, quarterback they got over there. And then yeah, he's, four, coming off three picks, he's, he's coming off three picks. He's coming off three picks. He is. He is. He's he's a little wild with the ball. He's he's a little wild, but he hasn't played much, and I think that's the thing. He hasn't played a lot of football. He played at Florida. He didn't play a whole lot. Played one year, got drafted. So, like, he hasn't played a lot of football over the last, let's say, four years. And then yeah. he was hurt last year for an extended period of time. So there's a lot of there's a lot of mistakes that they're going to have to live with with him. But if he figures it out, he's a home run waiting to happen. He, the kid is big. He's fast. He got a cannon. He throwed about seventy yards, man. He's insane. Like, Listen. so we better be on our better be on our p's and q's. Just there's a lot of there's plenty of intangibles. I, I you know a lot of a lot, a lot of guys a lot of guys have intangibles. A lot of guys have intangibles, and that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay, he's big, he's fast, got a great arm, got all this stuff. Everybody's if you, not, if everybody's you can't not put it bad. together, if you can't put it together, none of that matters. None of that matters. And he ain't put it together yet. He's young. He's got time. He's got time. He got all kind of red shirts now. When you when you're a first rounder, you got red shirts. But if you don't put it together, he you had it. it together, it's he not going to matter. And you got a defense fine. right now. Your defense can't stop the run. Your defense can't right. stop the run, dog. On your defense ain't, can't help you out. So you are, help you. Yeah, that's you not going to help too because the the defense can't stop the run. The force Buckner's out, so that's going to hurt that. So yeah. I mean, like the Bears have a really good shot to come in and do something. But the thing that they can't do, well, hell, we ain't show that we can do it. We ain't show that we can actually run the football. So it's a great opportunity for us to go in and try to just enforce our will on somebody. But will we? Down their throat. But will we is the problem. Will we do I, that? I don't know, man. I don't know. Uh, I don't know if we have the the guys or the makeup to do that, honestly. Do we have the – you can't just turn your team into a running football team. You can't do it. Like, how, how did you build this team? You can't build it with a bunch of finesse guys and then say, hey, let's go be road graders. No, no it don't work like that. It so, doesn't, and 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 uh, Flu said we're not changing. He I said see. we're not changing. Either. Yeah, I I think there's I think there's some calls for change. Um, with the amount of pressure and the amount of sacks. Now, if he thinks it's just technique, it's not a talent deal. Then, um, okay. I mean, hopefully we see it because this is a prime example. This is one of those back old. I don't know if they still say it now, but this is one of those get right games. 
Right. So you you come in and you got uh, we're gonna get this thing right. We're gonna, gonna get, get it right. our offense right in yep. this game because they're gonna what they what they have to do is they know they can't stop the run. They know that the force buttoners out. So now they're gonna pack that box. Now we we really should see a lot of play action, but we gotta be successful running the football first. Then we gotta commit to it out of that. Then we can see Caleb and the receivers kind of get on the same page and go on this little three game Bro, stretch. We can see the number one pick flourish and do what he yes. does. Or what number one pick's supposed to do? No, we will. We're, we're going to see it. Don't worry. Yeah, he's That's not why quite I said young. That. That's why. Yeah, I said but it. you said it in a way that I ain't really. I ain't said really it. Like. I said it. Why you don't like what I'm saying? What you mean? Yeah, I, you mean I said it in a way. You have an like. undertone with some of the stuff you say when you talk about old OC Dub. You know. No. Number one pick. This is what that's what number one picks do. Mm, no, yeah, I, I bet you every Carolina fan would disagree. Yeah, you're right. It's, <laughs> hey, that's a rarity now. That's a rarity. That's no, a rarity. It's not because every Cleveland fan would disagree about Baker Mayfield too. When I when I when I came out when I came out, mm -hmm. uh, Carson Palmer was the number one pick. Uh -huh. Right, Carson Palmer was the number one pick, mm -hmm. and he did. You know, he came out. Listen, he wasn't perfect. He wasn't perfect. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you what, he connected. They also had Chad uh, Chad Johnson on that squad. They had yeah. TJ Hush Mazada. You know? Hush yep. Mazada. All right. Yep. When and I came out, the number one quarterback was David Carr. And he did not do it. The number one pick was David Carr. And he got smoked. How he good was hit. that team around him that he was surrounded with? I mean, they were they were a new franchise, so they weren't very good. They weren't very good. Okay, there you go. They weren't very good. I believe they had Tony Baselli. On like year eighteen, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> with no le no knees, no nothing. But what you say, he's the number one pick, so you got to come in and do something. Well, why didn't he go do something? That's what what you say. From what you say, the parameters you put around Caleb is well, you're the number one pick, so who cares? I don't care. No, no, no. What I'm saying, I'm not the pick. number one pick. Cook, let him cook. So number one pick should be. Listen. Okay. I've I've spent I've been a it's been a lot of time. It's been a lot of time. People saying, hey. Did you see that throw? The throw was amazing. Did you see that amazing throw? All right, I want it. That's so. If we get these play, these play action, this play action smackers, I want to see him cook. I want to see amazing throws. Me too. I, I do too. I think I think he's gonna all have right. opportunities. That's all. I think he's gonna have opportunities if we mm -hmm. can run the football. I think we got a chance to really look like an offense and finally get a few touchdowns in a game. Get him that first touchdown. Throwing, um, yeah, I, I think they got to stop defensively. Defensively, I think we got to come out. We got to stop the run. They, they got to. Yeah. They have a. I think they have an offensive line that can run the football. I think they're built that way. I don't think they want Richardson throwing the ball all over the place, throwing the ball 30, 35 times a game. I don't think they want that. They mm -hmm. want Jonathan Taylor with the ball. They want to. They want to just run the ball down your throat. If yeah. we can stop the run, and stopping the run is different. So. If you can stop the run with six guys in the box, that makes your defense a lot better. When you got to bring that seventh guy in the box, mm -hmm. now you you open yourself up for play action for holes that happen in, in the backside of your defense. So uh, if we can stop the run with six, not gonna be easy, but if we can stop the run with six, it would make it would make for a hell of a day come Sunday because I think we'll have a real real good showing. But sure. defense, I'm not worried about. I'm not worried about. I'm not. Defense. You're not worried. What you worried about? I'm worried about the offense. I'm worried about protecting Caleb. I'm worried. <clears throat> I'm worried about Caleb um, making plays, but like, 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 kind of what you're saying. Him showing that why I want to see this. What this is what I want to see. I want to see five plays in the game that make me sit back, sit back at Joe's on weed and say, uh, "That's why we took him right there." That's listen, what I want to see. I want to see. Hey, listen, listen to all the followers. I'm good. Listen, I'm good at this. I'm very good at this, okay? I just need you to know, all right? I knew I was going to bring it all the way back, all right? I knew I was going to bring it full circle. <laughs> well, you guys are right about that. We got the Joe's on Weed Street uh, coming up here in just a few days. Sunday afternoon, we'll be over there at the world-famous Joe's on Weed Street bar. A lot of fun. We had a great time at our draft party. It was unbelievable here's some of the pictures from the draft party night where everybody was excited for the two top 10 picks mm -hmm. and uh so you can get your tickets at all slash events 
If you become a diehard, you can get a discount on that event. You get a free shirt right out the gate with your deal. Oh, there's a lot of diehards. Oh, there yeah. is a lot of diehards here in Chicago. You're absolutely right about that. You go to allchco.com slash diehard. You can sign up. And uh, once again, come out to Joe's on Weed Street. General admission tickets, $10, $65 if you want the drink package included. Live pregame, live postgame, live Briggs and Brown show. We're going to be hanging out, watching the game with all of you. So and we should be a lot. a lot for $65 now. Hey, no. Hey, no. We're getting a we're, lot for $65. Well, hey, that's what we are. We're for the people. We're for the for people, the, baby. We're for the hey, people. Brad, right? Brad, did you know? Did you know that Joe's on Weed supports the Florida Gators? Program? Do they? Do they? Yeah. I know it's, a, it's 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 an IU bar. I'm mm-hmm. a Purdue I'm a Purdue basketball yeah, fan. So yeah, they got Gator through. flags in there too. Oh, yeah. You're a you're a Purdue basketball guy. Yeah. Okay, that's oh, awesome. They they had had a good problem team. You know, you know, no, they had no, they had a good you team. Have a problem with that? Because no, last, he year, last, last year, he doesn't have a problem. He has a last year. We don't want to start with basketball. We don't want to start with basketball up, because, no, no, because no, no, right now, Purdue up. and Arizona are our powers right now. Yeah, yeah. So, and right? Arizona came up to Indianapolis last year, and Purdue beat the brakes off them, if I recall. Listen, hey, listen, listen. Again, again. Like I said, Purdue – and Arizona are basketball powers right now. All right, that's right. We're that's basketball true. powers. I got enough more respect for Purdue. Okay, okay. okay. I got enough more respect know. for Orange Purdue. Trade. It's that Florida team right. down there. And that's that's right. right now. Purdue, Purdue, and yeah. power. Purdue and power it doesn't even sound right. Like what? Yeah. What are we? Well, well, Boilermaker. Maker. Well, you know what? It's a brave, it's a brave new world, AB. I and guess. Maybe, but you hey, know, you what? know what it you is? Got, you got the back-to-back national championship. You, you know what so it is? I I'm, I'm gonna tell you what it is. That's back in the past. That's way back in the past. Y'all ain't y'all have y'all never done it. So. They need to do I'm, something. They got a book right now. Florida you know, has a board meeting, meeting together secretly because they got to do something about Napier. Oh no, no, they no. got to figure that out. They're like, listen, we're getting together because it's it's time. No, 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 no. It's oh, it's not. It's not secret at all. <laughs> no, no. They, <laughs> we're meeting inside the swamp. Like, no, no. no it ain't secret. <laughs> if you're at Purdue, if you're at Purdue, you just need one of Roosevelt Colvin children, and you're gonna be pretty damn good. <laughs> hey, and, and they got one of Miles Colvin is the yes. up and coming player, a high They're flyer. God, yeah. shout out to Roe, man. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And his daughter is an unbelievable volleyball Unreal. player. Yeah, Unreal, exactly. man. Yeah, I see yeah. Rosie there all the time hanging out. He's a good dude. It's always cool yeah. to. To, to see you guys out hanging out and it'll be fun to hang out with you guys on Sunday, watching the game here and seeing if the bears can take down the Colts. So I know we all got to get to it here this afternoon. Uh, thank you guys for, you know, um, bringing in your wisdom and your energy here this Friday morning. I know everybody's going to see it here later tonight. Uh, we'll continue to work through things to see if we can start doing these, some live shows for everybody. But uh, for yeah. now, great job here today. El Boogie. Look at from week one Briggs and Brown show to week two Briggs and Brown show. Like you got to have faith for Caleb Williams. If if we can get Briggsy this much of an improvement from week one to week two, that that just shows me the light that Caleb Williams. Listen, listen, I'm from California. It's the show me state. Okay. Show me state. He's coachable. That's all. The, Uh, The show me state is, I thought that was Missouri. It, no, you see, that's why you don't know much about California. It's the show me state, homes. It is not. It is. <laughs> All right, AB, send us off, and then I'll close her down. Hey, man, appreciate y'all. Hey, see you at Joe's on week. Hey, Joe's. We'll be there. We'll be there, baby. Y'all be there. See us there. Bear down. Bear down. We all city like the mayor. 